Energy Weekend Preview, the final pro motocross race of the year, Ironman Raceway here in Indiana. I'm Jason Wigand. We do have a three-round SMX playoff and world championship coming up. But first, we have to find out who will be the 450 motocross champion for the year. We're going to talk to the rider with the big point lead coming in, Chase Sexton, in this edition of the show. Also, his teammate, Julian Boumer, who has been way better than probably anyone has noticed in his rookie season as a 250 rider. He's been in the top 10 in almost every moto this year, but outside of that top five, six, it tends to not go notice. So I'll talk to him and some others, get ready to crown champions. Hayden Deegan running a number one plate today on press day. I've heard he's even asked if he can race with it tomorrow. I think the rule book would say no, but last year's 250 champ, Hunter Lawrence doesn't race 250s anymore. I don't know what's gonna happen except for the fact that it'll be a fun weekend. So let's get to it. Chase, being so close in the championship the last two years, how does it feel coming into this weekend to potentially wrap up the title? How does it feel to kind of be known as the guy in the class right now? Yeah, it feels good. Um, 2022 uh, was definitely a tough loss for me. Um, it really kind of, I think, kick-started my outdoor career after that. I think ever since then, I've become a different guy. And uh, I can give kind of a thanks to Eli for kind of just teaching me a lot, honestly. And um, yeah, that's kind of honestly evolved into now. So I feel good. I, uh, I like being back in Indiana, uh, pretty close to home. So I'm uh, going to have a lot of hopefully fans out there tomorrow, a lot of family, and uh, just hopefully go out there and make them proud. But it, yeah, it's been fun summer and uh, feeling good on the bike. As you mentioned in the press conference earlier, uh, during Supercross, we started off a little bit slow, but then you just kind of built as the year goes on and started to kind of find find your low towards the end of the year. Do you think that really contributed to being so successful outdoors this year? Yeah, it, uh, I can say preseason Supercross, I was in a dark spot. It was not good. I was uh, hoping to be top 10 in A1 and uh, was able to get on the podium, obviously. Uh, was up and down in Supercross. I feel like every time I have a good race, I have a bad one to back it up. And then um, towards the last three or four races, I was kind of getting better, getting better speed, feeling more comfortable. And then that kind of built into this outdoor series and yes, I, I don't think I would be where I am now without Supercross. It kind of um, taught me uh, new things about myself that I hadn't really dealt with in the past as far as just mental stuff. And uh, it's kind of led me down a road to becoming just more well-rounded. And yeah, we're, uh, we're here now and trying to uh, yeah, just have fun tomorrow, like I said, and uh, end the summer on a high. All right, Drew, making your pro, pro debut this weekend after a successful week at Loretta Lynn's. Uh, take me through that and kind of everything that's just led up to this. Um, it's been a lot of winning leading up to this. I've had a pretty good year in my amateur, and uh, that's what got me this uh, this uh, race for this weekend, you know. And uh, bike's really good. Did press today. Uh, track was pretty gnarly rough, but uh, got used to everything pretty fast, and uh, racing should be great tomorrow. How has uh, racing up in Canada been for you? Do you think that's going to really uh, benefit you uh, in the motos tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's going to benefit me a lot. You know, I did a full series, and uh, I just kind of, it helped me a lot with learning the series and stuff like that. And, uh, yep, longer motos up there, so I'm good in shape and stuff like that. So uh, it helped me a lot. Julian Beaumare, uh kind of been a steady year for you, actually, just quietly been in that top ten all year long, and you've been building along the way. Kind of take me through the as the year has gone on, what you've been working on, and kind of how you've progressed as the year has gone on. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's been a good year. Um, the crash in Southwick slowed my momentum down quite a bit. But, uh, no, I'm happy with my season. Uh, we've been working late on just uh, – confidence believing in yourself and uh, believing in the work that we do during the week and uh, that's been showing the last couple weeks so uh, I'm happy with where I'm at and I'm ready to end on a high note this weekend. Uh, a lot of the KTM group is uh, based down in Florida at Alban Baker's facility but you've kind of taken a different round been training out in uh, Lake Havasu where you're from. Uh, take me through that and how that is with training with Davey and kind of the knowledge that he's been able to give you. Uh, yeah it's been amazing uh, obviously I went back to Havasu for a couple weeks uh, during that break and uh, I was happy, just happy to be in a new scenery, new place. Um, it was warm, 117 every day. So, uh, yeah, I'm happy with where we're at. And uh, obviously, Davey's been a big help. Um, we, we've worked so hard these last two years. And uh, to be where we're at right now is incredible. So um, I'm really happy, and I'm ready to keep plugging away. All right, Aaron, back on the podium last weekend at Bud's Creek. It was a better weekend for you, and definitely in that second motor, you're a little bit closer to the front there. When you watch the 450 class, it seems to be kind of separated into groups, you know, and Chase and Hunter kind of be like you're right on their heels right there. When you get to that level where, you know, you're talking about, you know, half a second here, half a second there, what is it really that makes the difference between them and then when you're right there and you're a little bit off of them? Or is it just minimizing mistakes? Yeah, minimizing mistakes and, and just 
you know, I feel like I get to about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then they kind of, I don't know if it's that they go faster or I just slow down just that much. And, and um, yeah, I think it's just I need to not let them gap me right there. If I can just keep in it within, you know, keep it to within one second all the way through 30 minutes, I think at the last two I can, I can really make a push for it. But uh, they're, I mean, they're the best right now. So I, uh, I was, I was, I was mad after the first moto in Bud's Creek, and and I tried to really show that that I belonged up there, and I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to show them that that I had the speed, and and um, yeah, I think I did that for a little bit, but still, it was just I didn't have that end speed where where I really really needed to so um, it might be a little bit different here I've been practicing all week so uh, maybe we can uh, get a start run away from these boys and they won't be able to catch us uh, with, with about five minutes to go riding down the uh, outdoor series now and we're headed into SMX since the addition of SMX a lot of riders have talked about just how taxing the whole series is on your body and on yourself just mentally too so kind of take me through that and your thoughts on how long the season is now yeah, I mean, you got to think it's it's 17 rounds of Supercross, and um, we only get two weekends off, and then it's 12 outdoors, and we we do get a little bit more time off in the outdoors, but there used to be 12 outdoors. Now there's 11, and then they've added, you know, three more races where it's not just you know get in race saturday get out it's you know show up on thursday you got to be there for practice on friday do you know autographs whatever and then the press conference on friday and then saturday and and yeah it's all it's all cool and whatnot but um i think i'm not i don't organize the races so i don't i don't, I don't want to get into it but i do think it's it's a lot and it's a lot on the teams. It's a lot on uh, us. It's a lot, you know. It's it's a lot for everybody, especially when you know I, I got kids and and uh, we used to have about a month off, and now if uh, if I end up going to Europe, it's it's only about two weeks off. So uh, not not a not a lot of time to you know really hang out with the family or, or do anything like that. So so you got to make it really really count. Um, but I mean. I was I was telling Jason Wygant earlier in the week. I, it's it's cool the money and all, but um, but three races doesn't really define who you really are. It's it's uh, the the 17 races in Supercross, or it's the 11 races out here where you know there's there's 22 motos all 35 minutes long, and it's uh, it's really really taxing. And then you're turning around and going to do those three races, which I mean. The money is definitely appreciated, but I think there was uh, there might have been a, an opportunity for a better way to give the money out. But you know, like I said, I don't I don't organize. I'm not going to judge. It's uh, it's all good in the hood. All right, Hayden, coming off a pretty dominant summer into the last round this weekend, uh, just kind of take me through how it feels to uh, kind of shut the haters up and uh, wrap that championship up early at Butts Creek. Yeah, it's definitely nice. Uh, worked really hard. I mean, off season uh, between Supercross and Motocross in that short little break, and I mean during Supercross was just building because I uh, got injured before Supercross. So definitely had a chip on my shoulder to uh, prove everyone wrong in the outdoor season. Uh, outdoor season. So uh, even the riders, I wanted to show them that you know I could any time I could kind of pull it out and beat them. So outdoor season turned it up a notch, and yeah, we were able to win by 70 points. Uh, that's when we finaled the championship off. Coming into SMX now, how does the program look during the week? Are we going to be riding more Supercross or kind of sticking to outdoors? Yeah, I mean, as of now, I was on outdoors, and we did one day of SMX. We have, like, a hybrid track. So now that you uh, throw in the SMX series, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of different variables. So whole new tracks now. Uh, Star has one right down the street in SMX track that we're riding. So it's pretty sick. Dean Wilson obviously didn't want to have to race outdoors this year, but kind of in a points battle there for the last spot for SMX. Uh, take me through Bud's Creek and kind of how that weekend went for you and what we're looking to do this weekend. Yeah, definitely wasn't uh, planning on doing really too many outdoors and uh, 
Yeah, points were close and trying to save myself from going to the LCQ, so I showed up to Bud's Creek with one thing in mind, to get Chez, and unfortunately it didn't happen. First mo, my, uh, I got all my spokes blown out, first lap, so I DNF'd, last gate pick for second mo, and just bat last off the start and just came through the pack to 21st, so it was a terrible, terrible weekend, lost points. So I'm pretty out of it now, I'm like 14 points back, I'm here more for exercise. <laughs> and if I get a little bit of luck, then I make it. If not, then it's just good training going into uh, it's good training going into SMX. So obviously you didn't expect to race outdoors that much. Was there any program leading up to this, or was it kind of just like you went in with nothing? Yeah, there was absolutely no program because the bike that I was riding during the week, I put it on uh, the Stan Benson racing truck uh, at Washougal. So I hadn't had a bike at all to practice on. So. I went and raced in Brazil, um, which was fun, super cross, and then, yeah, I just jumped into Bud's Creek, and I, I figured I could still be like top 15, which I still think I can, but um, yeah, no, no prep at all. Hey, this SMX ruined my, my summer holidays. I was planning on being in Cabo drinking some margaritas, but here we are grinding it out when I quit outdoors two years ago, so oh, it's all good, having some fun. This will be my last ever outdoor national, so just going to enjoy it, give it a good push, and uh, yeah, have some fun.